Uh, hello, today I want to talk about linked lists because I think it's one of the most basic data structures and I think everybody needs to know about it so that's why I want to talk about that today. Uh, so let's, let's look into it. Um, so when data is stored in a linked list, it's stored in a sequence of nodes and it's, it's often compared to an array but instead of putting the values in these boxes here, uh, a linked list will put the values in, in nodes that are linked with each other. And when I say linked, it means that each node, let's call um, the, these boxes nodes, contain an address indicating where the next node is. Okay, so uh, let's compare this to an array. So each box in an array is indexed and they're physically next to each other. This means if you want to change a value of an array, for example, let's say you want to change the, the fourth element 15 to 16, you can simply say, uh, go to the fourth box and which is index three and change 15 to 16. So it's, it's going to be very simple, but when it comes to linked lists, we first need to go to the head and then follow along the linked list. After we come to the fourth um, fourth node, then we'll be able to change that value. So it would be much slower. Uh, for example, if the linked list consists of like 1,000 nodes, then we'll have to do that process a thousand times if you want to change the, um, the, the last node. So you, you might want to question then why would we use um, a linked list? So if you use a linked list, uh, adding or deleting an element at the beginning of the, the list would be quite simple. So like in that case, it's, we say it's going to take, um, it takes constant time. So the time for adding something at the beginning wouldn't matter, would, would be the same whether we're, we're dealing with one or two nodes or a thousand, a, a thousand nodes. So in that case, um, it's, going to very, it's going to be very fast and in some applications that can be very useful. Uh, when I was uh, mentioning arrays, uh, remember how I said uh, that in, in an array the, the, the locations are physically next to each other and the addresses are fixed. So in that case, when we want to uh, add something at the beginning of an array, all the values will have to shift and that can be a bit more uh, complicated than, than a linked list. So that's an example of, of why a linked list would, would be better than an array. And here you can see this is a, a linked list called a doubly linked list. So what we saw here like before was a, a singly linked list. Each node only contained the address of the next, but in a doubly linked list, each node will um, contain the address of the next and also the previous. And in this case, uh, adding an element at the end of the, the linked list would be easier than, than a singly linked list. Okay, so um, I think that's that's enough for the basics of linked lists. Let's um, uh, we're going to uh, try to implement a linked list in in Go. Uh, first, we'll we need to describe a node. So type and a node needs a data and we're just going to use a single number and it also needs to hold next which is the address of the next node and so that needs to be a pointer okay next we need to describe a list called linked list And here it needs to hold a head and this just has to be an address of the node, the pointer of the node, which is the head. So a good thing about linked list is you don't need to contain the whole list. You just need to um, contain the, the head of the list and length. Okay, that's going to indicate how long the linked list is. Uh, right now, we can't do much because we're not able to put in the, the nodes inside the linked list yet. So let's make a method that can do that. So func and the receiver is going to be a link list and we'll call it prepend. 
and it'll gonna take a, a node to be added at the front. Okay. So if you're new to Go, this is how you uh, define a method. This is called a method receiver. And in, in Go, like unlike other object-oriented programming languages, in Go you define the method outside of the struct. And this is how you indicate it that it's for linked list. You put a receiver. This is called a receiver. And here you can see that the receiver is a pointer. This means you want to actually uh, make modifications to this receiver. If you just put it as a, a value, just a, a value receiver, then we're just going to be working on a copy of it. So we want to actually um, work on the actual receiver, like change the, the values and stuff and whatnot. So we need to put it as a pointer. And in most cases, uh, you'll see a pointer, uh, pointer receiver more often than a value receiver. I think inside the method we'll make a temporary place called second and put the current head in second. Then set the new node as the head, which is n, which is n, and let the new head point to the old head, which is second. So. And we need to increase the length because we added something. All right, uh, now we can do a short test because we can add nodes to the linked list. Uh, we're gonna need a function main. And I'm going to make a new list called my list. So I just created a new list. And now I need to create some nodes. Uh, okay, uh, we need to pass in a pointer, and that is what this that is what this is for. It needs to be a pointer. And then we are able to prepend it. My list dot prepend. And, and after that, I'm just going to print out the my list. Like the print, just print the whole thing. Okay, uh, I think it's all good. Um, I'm going to run it. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, we just printed out my list and this, you can see that uh, that's the address of node three because we added that at the last. So that will, will be the, the head and three would be the length of my list. Okay, this is just a, a test. Um, I'm gonna go back. 